when you enter a situation in which you are actually a learning situation, in which you are trying to acquire a certain amount of knowledge, or a certain type of knowledge, most people come into a learning situation with certain boundaries already set around their thinking. Uh, which makes epistemolo epistemology a very important question. Epistemology is really, it's, it's two very simple questions. What qualifies as knowledge? What is knowledge and how do we get it? Very, two very simple questions. And contrary to popular opinion, not everything that people believe qualifies as knowledge. People like to put boundaries around their thinking. With some people it's political boundaries. With other people it's religious boundaries. In other words, there are lines that they don't want to cross. In science, you can't really do that. Uh, in, not only in science can you not really do that, but you can't do it in any area in which your goal is to learn the truth or to determine the truth as closely as, as you can determine it. If you put the only restraints are those of reason and common experience. Uh, those are the guidelines that should be in place for everybody. But if you come into a learning situation and there is a religious line which you're not going to be willing to cross, then you have to, you forfeit the possibility that you will learn everything it's possible to learn. If there's a political line that you're not willing to cross, then you can forget about <laughs> acquiring knowledge because your barriers are up and you're not willing to go past them. If you compare getting knowledge by relying on authorities uh, with getting it scientifically, using scientific methodology, you have in one case where the person is doing his own thinking, because what I think what a lot of people don't understand is that what scientists do, the methodology they use, and the types of reasoning they use are really not unique to science. They weren't even invented by scientists. What scientists have done is to take the successful methodologies and ways of reasoning that people have always used to solve practical problems and to develop explanations you know, for questions that they had and to apply them to the study of nature. That, that's, so scientific reasoning is not even unique. We all do it every day. If you rely on an authority or an authoritative source or an authoritative person for knowledge, you're essentially not having to think at all. You're letting someone else do your thinking for you. And if you don't know anything about how scientific reasoning works or even about how good critical thinking works in any area, you don't really know whether what you're getting from this authority is reliable. And so it's very dangerous simply to rely on authoritative sources, surely by virtue of by the power of their authority. What the intelligent design people are doing is substituting authoritarianism and religious revelation as knowledge. And they have no methodology, they have no epistemology, they reject the methodology of science, they reject the epistemology of science. Science has a methodology. It's all the things that scientists do to construct natural explanations of the world. They have an epistemology, it's called empiricism, right? And it means that you rely on observation using your five senses to learn about the world and then you re rely upon your powers of rational reflection to construct explanations for your data. That's what they do. And you don't accept into science the supernatural as a principle of scientific explanation, which when you get right down to the bedrock of what intelligent design is about, it's trying to explain the natural world in a supernatural way and trying to pass off the supernatural as a scientific explanation. There is no epistemology involved there. You simply pick out an authoritative source, in this case for the intelligent design movement it's the book of John rather than the book of Genesis which they've substituted for the book of Genesis and you simply from there pick out whatever other sources of revealed religious wisdom you want to add to that and you try to convince people that you're doing science. There's no epistemology there. There's no methodology there. And so when we get right down to the bedrock issue involved here is when people say they know things, do they truly know? 
Can they show others how they got this knowledge? Scientists can do that. They can show everybody. They can sh science is public. It has a public, the methodology is public. They can show anybody how they do what they do, how they know what they know. So far, the intelligent design creationists have never shown anybody how they would even themselves go about answering the questions that they raise because they have no method and they have no epistemology. I remember walking in my country neighborhood the day after 9-11 and E.L. Doctorow, the great author, was on the radio and uh, he, like all of us, were, was very upset and uh, emotional and uh, we can still recall how we felt, I'm sure. Uh, he said that the struggle that 9-11 revealed was between a group of people who believe that the answers are already provided and have been provided for hundreds of years. So there's no reason to search for new answers. And a group of people who do not believe that all the answers are provided, they do not believe that all the answers are written down, they want to search for, engage in a quest to try to find the answers. And uh, I'm not comparing creationists with terrorists by any stretch of the imagination, but the creationists do believe that the answers are already provided. They're written down in the Bible. It's the literal truth. And others, the scientists, believe that we do not know all the answers and that instead of reading the answers in a book, we should try to find out the answers. And that's why we have the quality of life that we have today. And that's why things work like flu viruses and your automobile and airplanes fly and atomic bombs explode and so on and so forth. Not every result is good, in other words. So if you have to pick ideology or pick rationalism and reason, to me the choice is obvious.